Hey guys, Aaron here. Welcome back to the channel. I have a really cool announcement to make. I am now a Soul Performance Parts dealer. So if you need anything from soulpp.com, give me a shout and I can uh, get an order in for you. Today, I'm gonna to be installing one of their products. It is a valved bypass system for my Porsche Boxster 986. It's uh, gonna make it sound a lot better, yet still allow you to keep the stock sound when you want it. So this is what it looks like. This is what half of it looks like. So it uh, pairs with your stock exhaust and uh, it has a little key fob and, that you can press a button and it will open the valves and it'll sound much, much better than stock. But when you wanna close the valves, you're just gonna have a normal stock sound. So. I know a lot of you are looking for something like that. If you've followed my channel for a while, you know that I have a cheap $250 eBay exhaust on my car right now. Well, just the muffler, I still have my stock headers. So today I'm gonna to be putting a stock exhaust back on it and showing you how to install this kit here. So of course you're gonna want a little bit of a before and after sound. If you have a Boxster, you know what it sounds like before. Uh, but I also wanted to show you what it sounds like with this eBay kit so you can kind of compare all three options. I'm going to go ahead and record the sound of eBay one before I take it off, but I'll put all of these at the end of this video. This is a stock exhaust that we are going to put back on, but uh, while it is off the car, it's an easy time to show you Soul's product. So this is the uh, bypass that you have here. So you can see that all this thing does is replaces this pipe right here. So we're gonna get rid of that really ugly, crusty piece. We're gonna attach this end over here. This other end is gonna attach to the cat right here. And it's just gonna have a, uh, an exhaust tube that is pointing straight down. Here is the valve on the top. Well, yeah, it'll be on the top of it up here as it sits in there. So it'll sit up in there like this. So your exhaust will point down and uh, the valve will open and close this valve. There's the valve in there. So when you uh, are just running stock, your exhaust goes right through the tube to your muffler, just like stock. And when you wanna open it up, you open that and your exhaust comes out here. Sounds much cooler, bypasses your muffler. So these are the instructions that you're provided with. You're gonna want this video instead of these instructions. There are two components to this. You'll see the valved exhaust bypass pipes themselves, and then there is a valve controller kit, and that is what actually activates the valves. So again, the pipes themselves, absolutely beautiful. They seem straightforward enough, uh, but right now I'm gonna try to work on the valve controller kit Okay, so this is what it's gonna look like installed down here. Um, this is just fit in. I started over here, get this one started. And uh, once you get that one slid in, it's easy to get the other side in, but I realized that the way it comes, your uh, mounting bolts are up here. And there's gonna be no way to access them uh, with that in the way. So I'm gonna have to reposition my clamp here so that they're uh, facing down here so that I can get to them. Um, and there's no way to turn it past here because they hit this piece. So I'm gonna have to pull this thing back out. Uh, so make sure your clamps are adjusted correctly before installing that. All right guys, after fighting with getting this old one off, I bought this thing which is a uh, $60 channel lock that is ginormous essentially, but oh my God, it makes this so much easier. So I already, uh, I already flipped this one over so that the bolts are gonna come down. But with it, I was just able to grab this and get a good grip and rotate it, push it in this way. Ugh, exhaust work champion. And let's see, I haven't touched this one yet. I need to, uh, Flip it around as well. It's nice and corroded, but oh, nice. oh man, this thing is worth every penny of that sixty dollars. Get 
to both bolts. All right, here is the second beautiful piece. And you'll notice that once they are installed up there, this tip kind of aims towards the back just a little bit. So that's how you know which side goes where. I'm just gonna fish it up here gently. And on the other side, I started over here with the uh, straighter pipe. Lined up straight in here. Oh, there we go. All right. So let's see, get that one worked in and push it in. And this one will make contact. And uh, I didn't attach the exhaust to the cat yet. In that location, so it still has a little bit of play. So. All right, there we go. It's all slid in. I might uh, pull this one back out just a hair. all the way in okay so it wasn't too bad so we're just going to try to go through these directions i'm actually going to try to pull them up online because these are terrible printouts that i can't really see what is supposed to be happening here but step one is gaining access to the top of your engine i have a video on that check it out if you need to know how to do that and then meet me back here Welcome back. Step two is to locate a switched 12 volt power source. So that means when you turn your key on, then the 12 volt power is on. They use this solenoid that's under the driver's side intake runner. So let's see if we can find that. Okay, so in service position, it uh, looked like they were looking right over here. And, uh, I see this little connector so uh, maybe that's what they're talking about so I'm just gonna reach a hand under here and there's a I think there's a little uh, metal tab yeah I can push that down disconnect this guy yeah okay there we go yes yeah, the wire that's coming right down here So I just push this down with my thumb, pull that out. So with the uh, engine not on, touch the terminals and you can see that there is no reading on there. Now let me turn the ignition on. We have 12 volts on the uh, right side as we're looking at it. Hey look, we're already on step four. So we're supposed to mount the valve controller in a safe dry spot within reach of that power source. And uh, this is the valve controller. And in their picture, they mount it right here. So if you're actually uh, mounting it to a surface, uh, there are two holes that you could use bolts for. I assume we're just gonna use some zip ties, but let me go figure out what they did. So just got off the horn with Soul, and they said that they used a 3M VHB tape to apply this on here. So uh, I don't really trust tape by itself. So I'm gonna use tape, and then I think through those little holes, I'm also gonna tie it on with some like safety wire, essentially. So I'm just cleaning this off with some denatured alcohol. I'm just going to use a combination of this uh, Gorilla mounting tape that's like the strongest stuff I could find and then some of this uh, 24 gauge wire. This wire has held these vents on for a long time and uh, it's doing a good job there so let's reuse it again. Looks like the back of this is just wide enough to put two strips of the tape. All right, got my tape and uh, just going to stick it right there. All right, there's 
stuff is really strong. Um, ooh, I just realized this is gonna block me from opening that, probably. Hmm. All right, so <laughs> I need to mount it a little bit to the left, so let's see how hard it is to get off. <laughs> okay. Pretty sticky, but movable. All right, let's see. All right, I'm putting it a little further closer towards me so that uh, I leave clearance for my air filter here. And let's reattach. All right. Yeah, I definitely would not trust this alone. So I'll definitely be using the uh, holes down here in my safety wire to keep that taut. All right, just cut off a uh, couple feet of this wire fed it through the hole over here. I'm just gonna pull it through, stick it under my manifold, and uh, bring it up the other side and stick it through the other hole. All right, so I have this safety wire tool that I'm going to uh, use to tighten this up. I mean, you could just use your hands and tighten it, but this gets them really tight. All right, after this stuff snapped for the third time, I went and found my real safety wire, which is actually thicker than this. So let's uh, try it for the fourth time. Okay, that's better. Now we can just uh, tuck this down around here or just cut it off. All right, I think that is fairly secure. Step five here is to splice in the valve controller power source. So we're gonna take the power, the red wire that they labeled with a nice little plus for us, and we're gonna go and tap it into the uh, cord that we decided was the positive, which is the red wire down there, there's a red and a purplish. So here is our red power. So they labeled it with a nice little uh, plus on there. And so we're going to um, splice into the red one here. So there's a red and, I don't know, red and black maybe wire, and then there's a purple wire. So we're going to the red. Now, should I solder in that connection? Absolutely. Am I going to? No. I'm going to start out with these uh, butt connectors that everybody hates, but honestly, I've never had any issues with them. So we're going to try the easy way first. If you've never seen these, all you have to do is put one of these over the wire, squeeze it on there until it snaps and clamps in place, and it makes a uh, connection with this. And then the other end, you just uh, attach to the end of your wire slide it in there and you have a connection. Ta-da, just like that. Now you just uh, plug them into each other. And before you ream me about using these things, A, I don't care. B, I told you the right way to do it. And C, this thing is not a vital piece of electronics. So if it stops working, my car's not gonna blow up. I just can't sound cool anymore. All right, I'm not gonna connect it yet because I might route this underneath here because this is gonna be plugged in down there. Uh, I haven't decided yet. Uh, so I still have to do my ground. So we'll figure that out. And there's another little wire that kind of looks like a ground, but this is just the antenna uh, for the remote. So it's just gonna fall down there somewhere. So next, I believe we're gonna do the ground. Yes, step six is to extend the ground wire if necessary to reach a good ground point. Uh, and where they ground it is to this little bracket that they uh, give you, the uh, solenoid that comes with an M6 bolt. 
This is our solenoid. Okay, kit also comes with these two pieces, so I'm gonna put this on the end of our ground, and I'm going to uh, attach it like this. Then I'm gonna attach it through here and through here, so we'll be uh, grounded right here. All right, now my issue with their diagram is uh, this is where the bolt fits in from their really crappy picture. It looks like this bracket right here with the hole in it is where they're attaching the solenoid because I don't see anything else in the car that looks like this. And you could also tell that it's near a corrugated pipe, which on some models, this is corrugated all the way through, I think, or, you know, whatever you call this. So yeah, you can see that this is the bend in the bracket and they have the bolt coming through the back of the bracket into that nut right here on this side that's, uh, well, it looks like a nut, but it's part of that bracket, which in that scenario would have this bolted on like this with the arrow pointing up straight at me. But if we take this over here, and I try to do that with the arrow pointing up straight at me. Uh, this hose is right there. So that's how they have it mounted in the picture. Um, the only way that I can find to actually mount it here is if I were to mount it like this, and then I can uh, still have to have the bolt come through the back, but it's kind of hard to see in this video but this piece is a little higher than my um, hose here. And there has to be a cover that goes on here and that cover does not have a lot of clearance. So I'm gonna mount it here because that's the only thing I can think of. And I'm gonna hope that the cover doesn't come into contact with it. And now I see why they say to extend your ground wire if necessary, because if that were to reach, then the positive is gonna be way too far away because this cable stretches a long way, but they are uh, interjoined right there. So that's gotta be here. And then I'll have to extend the ground wire to get over there. All right, I'm just gonna connect it up top and then uh, tuck this guy back under here and plug it in. And then I have my ground with a little extension and that terminal at the end and before trying this i'm spreading a rag out down here because i find it highly improbable that i'm not going to drop this at least once attempting to get that in there all right to make this easier i'm just going to remove this it has two pinch connections and i freaking hate these things so i want to introduce you guys to a new tool I just spent way too much money on these, but I think it's going to be worth it. These are breather hose uh, a release tool. So let me test it out for the first time. All right, feels like it's going to be the red one. So you slide it on here and it's tight. And then you just uh, rotate it so that the pressure points are actually pushing on the little parts that you want to squeeze with your hands to release. <laughs> All right, so sorry, I had to use two hands, but uh, once I got this on the ridges, then uh, I didn't have to actually apply any more pressure. I could use both hands, one hand on here, one hand on here, to uh, start separating these guys. And ha, it is now disconnected. So I can pop this thing back off. Oh yes, so no more dreaded breather hose clips that I have to destroy my fingertips on. So yes, it actually works. Super excited about these. I couldn't find any on Amazon or any ones that looked as good as these. I'll put a link where I got them. Um, it looked like it was gonna take a long time to get them, but it actually came in less than a week. So uh, big shout out to these things. Yeah, okay, so this is a great example. Once it's out of the car, you can see what this ring is doing, exactly what it's supposed to. Compressing it so these little clips detach and you can pull it right out. So, oh God, love this tool. All right, it was very easy to install this with that uh, hose out of the way. So that is my new tool of the week, by the way, I'm making a video on that tool, because that was awesome. Uh, I always dread removing that thing 
or anything with the breather, breather hose connection like that. So, um, all right, we got that on there easily. So now I'm going to go ahead and put the cover on now just to test fit it to see if that is going to interfere. See if I can put my phone under here and close it somehow. Okay, wow, it clears, but just barely. Oh, I see that I kind of, I don't have it tight yet. So it's kind of uh, up at an angle. So if I bring it like this, then I think our hose will be out of the way. Even if this touches a little bit, I think that'll be fine. So, all right, I'll tighten this up and just make sure it's flat. We got Shop Dog in the house helping out again. Thank you, Shop Dog. All right, guys, I've been stuck on step eight for a long time because this is where you're uh, supposed to tap into the vacuum line. And this picture here appears like they are using this T-tap and the only hose down here that looks like that that I see to tap into is actually what connects to your throttle body, comes under your throttle body and connects over here. And that is not a vacuum line, that is a vent line. Uh, so I called Soul, and here is what they told me. There is a vacuum line right here, this black one, not this wire, but this black one down here is a vent line coming out of the plenum right here. So they said to, ta I mean, sorry, that's a vacuum line, not a vent line. They said to tap into that vacuum line. It is very small, and let me zoom in here. So you can see it connects down here and goes right into uh, our little dome down here that creates our vacuum, I believe, in the first place. And that line connects to this thing right down there. So it goes under all of this junk. It's nice and dirty junk. And and you can see it right there. So this part is uh, solid and the little rubber piece that it plugs into is directly under this uh, really hard and immovable object. So um, I'm going to disconnect it from both places and try to use this uh, like brass T-tap that came with it to tap into there. So first I'm just gonna reach in and pull the vent line out of the plenum. All right, so it's disconnected now and it's routed in this little U-tube. <laughs> U-tube, get it. All right, so I'm gonna pull it out from under there, bring it out so I have a little better access to it. And then you can see that this thing that it is connected to down here, I guess I am going to pull this hard piece out and uh, where it's connected down there, use the tap. So let's see if I can just pull it from here if it'll come out. I'm going to break this thing. Feel the little lip. You can see the little lip. It looks like it's supposed to be pressed in all the way to that stop and it's not pressed in all the way so it seems like it should be easy to be easy to pull this apart let me use my right gloved hand and pull on that because it's nasty down there all right it actually took quite a bit of pulling but i finally got it out so i took this pick tool and pried around the rubber uh, to get this thing unseated finally and then it pulled out I cut off just a tiny bit of this uh, blue hose that they supplied and uh, put 
this end into there, put the T connector on, and now the fun part's gonna be reaching down there and uh, attaching the hose that I pulled this out of, put the T connector onto that. Actually, before I even reach down there, uh, while it's out of the car and easier, I'm gonna go ahead and attach another length here, and it comes with a check valve. And you have to make sure that the, in this case, the arrow is pointing towards your source of vacuum. So it's pointing towards the bottom T connector because this will be our vacuum source. All right, so I just stuck these pliers down here after fighting with it the other way for a while and uh, pushed that connection off of the little nub. So I disconnected this thing down here all together. If I don't drop it, I think it's going to be easier this way just to uh, pull this whole thing out. Oh, nice. Okay, so this is where it was connected. Uh, this is where I'm going to connect my new piece. And this end seems to be uh, broken off. So I wonder where that's supposed to go. All right, now I've got something that looks like this. So this is gonna go back into my plenum. This is gonna go into our new solenoid apparatus. This end is gonna connect back to our vacuum. This end uh, will require some research. All right, so we've got uh, this blue tubing piece coming back up into our plenum to our T that we made and into the old, I assume that's a Porsche check valve. And then that runs under into our vacuum down here. So you can see I just pushed that connection back on down there. And uh, this end that has our check valve, I got a new little piece. So we're just gonna attach that to there. And then that is going to attach to here and uh, we installed it. There is a little white arrow on this one, on the bottom though, that uh, is also pointing out this way towards our source of vacuum. All right, so there it is connected up to here. Now we're just gonna run one out here. It's gonna go down to our valves and it's gonna have another T to split off to each side. All right, here's their diagram of that part that we just did there. So step nine is to route the vacuum line safely down the shift linkage and under the car. And then you split the vacuum line with the included T. So yes, we have a second T here they included. And then connect each end of the teed off vacuum line to each exhaust valve. So simple enough. We're gonna uh, do that now. And they supplied us with this long one, this long one. I think they're having uh, too much fun at the factory over there. All right, so this is our shift linkage, I believe what they're talking about. So we're just gonna come out of here and uh, we'll zip tie it onto here and follow that through because that does go through to the bottom of our car down there. Okay, we have this connected now and it's just running down the shift linkage we got plenty of excess so I'm gonna lift the car and pull all the excess through there and I'll come back up and zip tie it later but I realized that they uh, still haven't mentioned in the directions at all about hooking our electrical connector up to here probably want to remember to do that so let me uh, un wire tie this thing stretch it over here Try to get this uh, connector over here. And I assume it only plugs in one way, but that is gonna be important. So I'm just going to uh, tie this stuff back up over here so it's out of the way and off our cooler down there. All right, so they are a little excessive, like 95% more wire than you actually need, uh, but it is all hooked up, so We'll go underneath and tee this thing off. All right, I got a ton of line here and it is uh, coming down through our, where our linkage cables are. There you go, you see daylight up there, looking out of the engine bay. So we'll zip tie it to the linkage cable up there 
And I guess right here, I'm just going to uh, cut it, put the T in it. All right, quick cut and stuck that in the place of the cut. So now this long length, I will cut down to size so that we can just plug it in right up here. You can see uh, that's where it plugs into, the little nipple coming out of there, and we do not have far to go. All right, throw in one zip tie here real quick, just to keep it up out of the way, and uh, make sure we have the correct length up top. All right, eventually I'm gonna put one zip tie here, and you can see it there. I'm gonna tie it up here so that I can run it on top of the uh, transmission mount here and up so i can keep it up high away from the cat we don't want it near that we don't want it to melt so i think if i tie it here and then just have it drawn tight into the connector that we should be good all right so you can see we have our t in here now and uh, this end it's gonna plug straight up there this end i'm gonna run over to the other side Okay, so this side, you can see that I just went over the transmission and all the way up here, and I'm actually gonna zip tie it to the top right there, with this little support bracket. And then it has a straight shot right there. Result. All right, zip tied there and uh, plugged right into there. All right, this is the final install before I button it up. So we have our positive spliced in over there. We have our thing mounted here with our tape and our wire. Uh, we have our ground coming over here with the supply bolt. We have their little solenoid installed up here at the top of this thing, which is still a little uh, high for my liking, but that's all right. So we have one end spliced off that goes down to our vacuum T, and we teed into this line that goes from the plenum down to our pump down there. And uh, out of this side, we've got it running down to the bottom of the car, teed off to our other item. So that is the install. Let's put the top on it and see what it sounds like. All right, here's what my exhaust currently sounds like with the eBay option. curious and kind of excited to see what it sounds like. What about you guys? Let's find out. The four stock exhaust sound, I'm gonna guess I probably should put this back on. Stock exhaust sound, take two. I'm gonna fire it up, put it neutral, and come out and join you and test out this for the first time.
Remember, if you order anything from Seoul from me directly as a dealer, I'm gonna get my subscribers the best price, get you a fantastic deal on not just exhaust, but anything they sell. You can reach me using the email Aaron at helpmediy.org, or you can find me on Facebook or Instagram. Send me a message there. I'll get a hold of you, get you the best deal out there. There you go, guys. Success. Uh, it sounds really cool. I can't wait to get out and drive it some. I'll try to get some driving clips of it for you before I post the video. Um, if not, look for a follow-up video where I'll get some of those in. I'm sure this video has been plenty long. Now, Sol does mention, and I've heard from other people, it takes several hundred miles of driving to break these things in. Uh, there can be small leaks in the exhaust with that valve until they've gone through the heat cycles and uh, close up properly, I guess. And they also get that nice, pretty color after they've been heat cycled. I know that through the uh, exhaust in the Cayman here. But now you guys have solid install instructions, much better than what I had. So uh, with this, you should be able to do this with no problem. Uh, after figuring out what you have to do, it's really easy to do all of the steps. There was nothing hard other than uh, removing the old exhaust pipes is probably going to be your toughest challenge just because they're old and crusty but uh, got a little tip in there for you on how to do that too so uh, please give the video a thumbs up subscribe guys uh, let me know in the comments what you think about this exhaust especially if you have one or had one or are thinking about it or comparing it to other exhaust comments let me know also uh, if you want to have a broader discussion about it check out my facebook page Help me DIY, and I'll talk to you guys on the next video.